dismissed branch executive committee chairperson of the Rossing uh, uranium mine. And you had the experience of the mine where the company, Chinese National Nuclear Corporation, uh, fired the nine uh, members of the executive committee, the Rossing executive committee. What was the result of that at the uh, mine after the firing? Um, the result after the nine were dismissed or unlawfully dismissed Mm, we, as the senior shop stewards, we had to, you know, step in. So we had, we called for an extraordinary binary conference where uh, an election had to take place in order for us to maintain the structure of the branch executive committee. And uh, the one thing that uh, the, the 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 members or the workers themselves had to go through is the fear because of. The, the strength that was in the, in the un, unlawful dis, dismissed nine, uh, w w when it came to uh, um, representing you know, workers within all the other issues that the Chinese were trying to like, you know, dissolve and renegotiate all the benefits. So we, were, we, were, we, were, we, went, we had to go through that uh, election process and uh, I was then elected as the chairperson. And we also had other senior, operate, uh, senior uh, shop stewards that had to come in now so that we, com we can form a quorum of, of, of the, the, the new uh, branch executive committee. It, it, and and it, it was quite tough because uh, immediately after the, 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 the election, after we were elected, the company decided that um, they were not going to recognize us as a branch executive committee. And that is where they started targeting uh, myself especially because I, I had a close relationship with the, the, the unlawful dis, uh, dismissed nine and they also uh, found out the, my background in the union and they saw that I've been in the union for quite a long time and I'm quite vigilant, I do not back down and they couldn't buy me. So the only way that they could uh, you know, roll out whatever agenda they had was to find something on me and they trumped up some alleged fraud, dishonesty, whatever. After I had no blemish, my record, the four years that I worked for Rossing, I have never had a case in whatsoever. My work performance has never been questioned, but then they tried to find something that had happened at a previous company that I used to work for, and that is what they used to dismiss me without a procedural hearing, nothing. So they dismissed me through a letter that they sent to me via email. And on the, on the, on the 28th uh, of January 2001, that's when they sent me that letter and they said, no, you have been dismissed because of all these allegations. And we, have, uh, we did an investigation and we gave you a report. They sent me an unsigned report uh, that they apparently did their investigation and uh, it it, in, their, in, their, in their conclusion, it quantified their decision to, to dismiss me. And even the individual that sent me the dismissal letter is somebody that does not have that power. Yeah, it was an HR acting as a managing director. And as per our procedural agreements and our policies and the code of conduct, the only person that has got the power to dismiss anybody it's either the board or the general manager after 
a procedural hearing has taken place and evidence has been found and you know a verdict has been has been uh, you know has been has been achieved via the committee so, that was so the Chinese uh, National Nuclear Corporation which runs this mine yes. um, now they they did they allowed management to dismiss people illegally that, that that's what you're saying that is one and correct. the other thing is is it seems that the attack on the union is coupled with uh, bringing in co uh, contractors to get rid of permanent workers. Is that the aim, to destroy the regular employment and bring back uh, contract labor for all workers? That, that has been the agenda from the get-go. Ever since the acquisition of, 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 Rossing, of the Rossing mine by the Chinese corporation, it has been their agenda to make sure that uh, they are not going to be dominated or, or, or they are not going to conform to the laws of the country or the, the policies that have been in place already in riot rossing. They are not going to uh, entertain any union negotiations. So they are going to dictate and they are going to uh, um, demolish any type of uh, uh, well-being or any type of welfare or benefits that were already in place that were being enjoyed for years, ever since 1978 when all these policies and agreements were in place, they, their agenda was to completely eradicate any union or any worker representative that, that was already in place. And the, um, the illegal discharge, what, what did this national union, Mine Workers Union in Namibia, do about the fact that they were apparently straight out union busting of the Rossine branch? The actual truth is that um, behind closed doors, the National Executive Committee, uh, alongside the Regional Executive Committee that was supposed to be in support of the Branch Executive Committee when it came to representing the employees and with, with regard to the, the, the unlawful di uh, dismissed nine and myself included, they distanced themselves after numerous times of us trying to communicate to them what was happening and us trying to have their support in order for us to curb all these injustices that were taking place at Rossing, they completely and utterly ignored and distanced themselves from us because obviously they were in direct communication with the company which is against our procedural agreement and th this is this is what we're dealing with you know we've got we've got uh, we've got a region and we've got national uh, union representatives that are supposed to be in support of the branch and it was non-existent they and, were, and we've heard testimony today and yesterday that these companies, the Chinese companies, but they have guns, they intimidate workers on the job, so workers are terrorized, they're, they're put in like quarries where they, they can't come out. Uh, it sounds like slave labor conditions in, in Namibia. It is, and we're not even going to sugarcoat it and call it like, no, uh, it's, we, we can't call it what it's not. What we see, we're calling it a spade, is a spade. And they, they, have, they have now uh, um, acquired the services of the national police to do their bidding when it comes to them trying to put uh, workers under, un, 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 under unhealthy conditions, unsafe working uh, areas, and they use like, to, to, to intimidate with firearms. And, and this, these are the things that are being tolerated by the government. It's allowing these things, and they are away. They are very much aware of these things happening all around our country in quarries, in mines, in, 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 even in, 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 in smaller Chinese-owned businesses. This is exactly what is happening, intimidation, but with the support of the government and national police. So at the end of the day, we will fight. We are still going to fight. We are not going to tell the world that our hands are tied but we need the support. We need to put all our hands together and then we need to fight this. And SWAPO has said that it's a socialist party, that, they're, that China is developing socialism and they say that they're developing socialism with Namibian characteristics. What does that mean? I have no idea. I do not even understand the concept of what SWAPO is, is, is it's all about. I do not see anything that they have put out there into the whole country to tell people that, no, this is what we're going to do, this is what we are doing, this is what we have done. And it's been more than 30, I mean, it's been three decades now after independence, and most of these things that are always being rolled out, it's only to sensitize people about the elections, especially now that they have the elections that's coming next year. And, and yeah. this lithium, this mountain of lithium, 
at, at the port of Walrus. What is that all about? All that lithium, that, is that mountain of lithium? That is, that is 100% resource looting. And um, for, for, for lithium to be exported, there has to be certain things in place. Are those things in place? No, they're not. And we are all seeing it. It's a country that is being sold by capitalists. And what do we benefit from it? We benefit nothing. All our resources are benefiting other countries. They are being exported at a lower cost to their own country, and then they are sold at the, at the international price. Yeah. So at the end of the day, there's a whole lot of things in there. As we heard in testimonies today, there, it's tax evasion. And, uh, you know, probably under the table payments, you know, there are kickbacks for whoever is involved. And, and the, all these things are being tolerated. And this conference is the first national labor tribunal in the history of Namibia. What do you see coming out of it? What would you like to see come out of this? What I would like to see is a unified international fight against all these uh, injustices. And um, within our country or at large in Africa, I would like us to start opening our eyes and see the wealth that we have and start protecting it. And not only protecting it with words, we need to come together and fight these injustices and use the law in order for each and everybody that is accountable for all these injustices, we need, they need to, to be taken to book. They need to be taken to task. And there isn't really a political alternative in Namibia, the United States, South Africa, there's no mass working class party. How do you see the formation of a mass working class party that will represent the working class and force the laws? Uh, first and foremost, we need, we need proper training. We need people to be educated so that they understand exactly what is their right, what is uh, um, the foundation of what belongs to them. And without this knowledge, without the proper structures in place, without the right, uh, the right people in the right places, we may not, we may not succeed in achieving what the whole of Africa and the whole of Namibia especially, what, what we are trying to, 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 to benefit from that belongs to the people and to the workers. Without proper education, we will not be able to achieve this. But we need, we need a whole lot of support with regard to knowledge, 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 knowledge. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us. I got to work with the Chinas in Rio Bot. The Chinese company in Rio Bot. And I got an unglück, I got an unglück had on the ground with the lorry. He had an accident underground with a, with a truck. This underground scoops, ne? Yeah. So that's good, okay? And um, my knee was damaged. I was, uh, I, could, I, could, I was not on a shock. Okay, he was under shock and he damaged his knee. Yeah, but but um, the time that I was on a shock was, I could not feel that he did not feel that his knee When he was under shock, he did not feel that his knee was damaged. Mm -hmm. And the China said, I had to pray, I had to clap in all. He said, yeah, that's my fault. I said, no. Yeah. Uh, he reported the incident, and the Chinese uh, employers said that it was his uh, own doing, it was his own yeah. fault. Now, I tell you, the lorry was at the breakdown. Had. He, he told them that the truck had a breakdown. There's no brick, there's no hand brick, and the truck had not my heart up and tiny. Okay. There was no brakes, no hand brake, and the truck slide. It, 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 yeah, it glided without the brakes, uh, service brake uh, engaging. Yeah. Yeah. And I had it so on the ground, tiny berg fast. Okay, uh, it, 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 it ran, it, uh, it ran into the... Yeah, it ran. Uh, and the back. Oh, it, 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 oh, it, it ran backwards. Right, yeah, right. Over, um, yeah, until until it hit the, the mountain. And yeah, bump it. Now. The bump the mountain, yeah. Yeah, and now, and the the the, the forekant van die lorry. Mm -hmm, the front side of the truck. Yeah, het opgeslant. Hij slant. Hit upwards. Hit up and he he pit. Hij uh, slant die die dijk die berg. Oh, hit upwards to the to the top of the uh, mountain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, now the, 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 the Chinese tell me, 
No, 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 no. No, I can't hear the Thai first time. The Chinese were talking their language and they couldn't understand what they were talking. He said, no, 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 no. You, 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 you. Go, 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 go. I said, no, 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 no. They, they chased no. him. Yeah. Now, now I come by the doctors, no, I'm not here. No. I can't see what is fault, no. But my knee is not now. Mm. Up to now. So. He went to the doctors to go check. For a checkup, yeah. the doctors cannot, cannot tell him it's what, is wrong, bone. With, what is wrong with this. It's not a bone, it's not a crack, it's not it's broken, it's, but uh, yeah, it's secret of sin of you. So what, he's tell, what he's saying that um, the doctors could not find any broken ligament, but uh, what he's uh, thinking is uh, maybe it's a sin, a, 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 yeah. what is it called? S sin is or? Mm. Uh, a nerve, a nerve the nurse, that, has, the nurse, that has been yeah. but damaged. You, but you were injured. Yeah, yeah he was injured yes. on duty. Yeah. And the Chinese did not claim anything. They don't they want denied. to claim yeah, they responsibility. Your, take no. responsibility for that. I don't know. No, I agree by it here. But I'll ask if you're sure. When the weather changes, when it like becomes it. like this, the, the pain it's comes. Painful and swelling. It's very painful and it's mm. swelling and swelling. Now, I don't know what I can do in this case, but to ask me, where is he? Want, 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 want. He says that he doesn't know where to go, he doesn't know what to do in this situation, because when he's asking, he, he, he doesn't get the proper help. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, let okay. Because my town council was threw him out, out of the country of Rio World. Now, I don't know. I hear he's back to China. Well, the Chinese company was thrown out. The, the town council of Riobot mm -hmm. threw out the Chinese company. Ne? Yeah. And then he's no more there. So he doesn't know where to claim. I hear a okay. China to. Apparently, they went back to China. But after that, after that, he heard that he was still here. He was still here. He was still here. He was still here. Afterwards, he heard that they are still in Namibia. Apparently, they are mining somewhere in Ventuk. No, I, I don't know why they are on the spoor. He doesn't know where to track them down. And it's now a few times, it's, it's now a long time. Long time. Okay. okay. Long time. Mm -mm. Extra, extra. He says that it's been a, it's been a long time now. Uh, is it two years, three years? Si, si. Yes, three. Yes, apparently three years. My name is Charlotte February. I was a former employee at Fly Namibia, which is a private company. Working at Fly Namibia for the past, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, working at Fly Namibia for the past one year and say five months, and then on the second of October, I just got a or previous the previous week, I just got a an email from them saying that they need to we have we have to have a meeting, and then on the second of October, I was from, uh, I had a meeting with them, and that's when I was told that I have to resign, which I never even thought of doing but it was an option that I was given. Actually, not an option. I needed to sign there and there with them. I wanted to consult with somebody. There was no representative as well. And then they just told me I needed to sign the contract that I resigned on my own, which I never even did because I love flying. I was a flight attendant, but because of some things that were mentioned, which I don't want to say here, I was actually put as a check-in agent. And yes, ever since the 2nd of October, I've just been unemployed. That's my story. So they forced you to sign your own yes. resignation? Yes. Why did they and do that? I had to say to everybody, no, I resigned on my own, but that was never the case. Yes. So is that, is that illegal? To it tell is illegal. It is legal because there was no representative as well on HR or somebody to really go through the contract with me. And I was so distressed and I just signed. Do you have a union? Nope. How many, how many workers are in this air, airline? Say more like 240, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So they're basically violating the labor law? Yes, they do. They did. How many other workers were forced to sign this? No, I was the only one. There was another lady also, which is a flight attendant. She was fired as well. Okay, she had a different case. I don't really know about her story. But from my side, and there are other employees as well, which are flight attendants, but they don't want to speak up because of victimization. They're afraid of being uh, retaliated against if they speak up. So why do you think you were fired? They even told me that they don't have a problem against me. I never raised any, or I never gave any problems towards the company, but they just said I needed to, and that was it. Strange.
yes but so, there's a lot of discrepancies happening there's a lot of things within the company that is happening which we don't want to talk about because at the end of the day what's going to happen the consequences if you speak up because there's actually basically nobody that supports us because we don't have any union has any union tried to organize this no. company no not at all but you need a union we do need one we do need one to defend yes. your democratic rights worker rights yes definitely okay what can people do to support you if Contact the airline? That would be better as well, because I went to as far as Ombudsman as well, to seek legal advice as well. My name is uh, Nox Mifima. I am a former employee of um, Namibia. Yes, I was employed for eight years as a first officer on the regional uh, fleet. And, uh, oh, go on. However, yeah, the airline closed in uh, 2020 on the 31st of March. It, was, it went into liquidation. And what happened to the workers? Well, we, we were shocked. Huh? We were shocked because um, time and again we were told that the airline was making money. I mean, not making money uh, since inception. And um, it came in as a shock because um, we were not really prepared. We just heard it from the corridors that, um, yeah, there's a likelihood of the airline closing down. But um, as far as we're concerned, it just came as a shock when the Minister of, of Finance, I think Mr. Ipumbushimi, announced in Parliament that uh, Enambia is now officially closing. Was this a national airline? It was a national airline, yes, it was. It was funded by the government, was supported by the government, and um, yeah, they closed it down because uh, they said it was um, a non-profit making organization um, since inception. But I beg to differ on, 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 on certain views. Um, the, 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 I beg to differ with, this, with, with the money issue, with the, with the profit issue, because you remember we, had just, we just had um, a serious uh, pandemic, COVID, and it not only affected Air Namibia, it affected almost all the airlines in the world. However, um, this was actually used as a tool to close it down. That was a final nail in the coffin. But um, there's a lot of discrepancies, a lot of questions asked. Management failed us. We are the workers. We were told what to do. We worked for a salary. But now, for the airline to close and to treat us like we, we're nobodies, it's it's it, it breaks it breaks one's heart. I've lost former employees, former colleagues on suicide. We've lost over 15 colleagues just this past year and this year, while waiting for the monies that we owe to us. So they still haven't paid you for your compensation. They still haven't finished paying us. They did part payment but they still haven't paid us. The government is ducking and diving. The liquidators are ducking and diving. Um, we don't really know what is really happening. Um, as I said earlier on to my colleague, uh, who is better knowledgeable, uh, I, would, uh, I would summon him to, to express uh, it even better. But for, as far as I'm concerned, the, the airline industry in Namibia is now run by a certain group of people and they give you what they want to give you they tell you when to stand when to sit because they have total control and the liquidators it's a bunch of old two uh, 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 old men that have been running the system and nobody's auditing them we we, we always try and we, we beg for our monies. My lessons is left. And I, 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 I beg to differ with what is being portrayed as a loss-making entity. Well, airline, South African Airlines was privatized to dissolved. Yes. Yeah, with South African Air, uh, Airlines, it's, it's, it's a similar situation they had. But like I said, it breaks down to management. Um, in, my, in my case, in, in, in NMB's case, you cannot summon a lawyer to run an airline. Or you cannot summon a doctor to run a bus industry. You cannot summon 
uh, 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 geologists to run the judiciary. So that is exactly what's been happening. Time in, time, time and again, they, they failed us. Look at the case of Ethiopian Airlines. Why is it making money? Why is it one of the best airlines in Africa? It even beats other European uh, airlines by far. But why, what is it, are they doing that we're not doing or that we didn't emulate? One, the management failed us. Number two, we get a structure of Qatar. Qatar has got 300 airlines, uh, aircrafts, if not more or less. And then you're talking of Enambia, which had 15, 10, 15 aircraft. We're battling. So, so they're crushing the little airlines, the local airlines, well, the national airlines, by these big monopolies. That's exactly what's happening. But the thing is, we're helping them to crush. Like, in, you see, for instance, in Namibia, if you look at the southern African part, the old Sadiq, all Sadiq, they've, they've now opened their airlines. Even the smallest countries have put an airline. We are the opposite. You are now closing down what everybody's opening. It's not making sense. We now have to go via Addis Ababa to go to places like London or Germany because there are no direct flights. We have to go through or Tambo to go to places like the United States, Brazil, China. You understand? Um, so it's disaffecting the people of Namibia. Yes, it is, because um, we exported a lot of fish to Germany. In Namibia, had a very good arrangement. We exported a lot of seafood to Germany. Your airline? Yes, in Namibia. And the passengers, they pref for some strange reason, um, the German customers, they preferred to fly with Air Namibia than their own Berlin Air, Lufthansa, and other airlines. Um, it's the services that we provided. I'm not saying that their services were, were, were less, but it's a, it's a choice of a customer at the end of the day. And uh, we had, yes, we had, um, we had our, our, our passengers. We, we were almost on a full flight. My name is Klofa Chivute, 39 years old. And um, I've been working for Racing for 10 years, but now I'm dismissed, or let me say I'm on medical separation. Um, I was diagnosed with a chronic kidney failure stage 5 in 2013. And then um, I went through a medical tribunal, uh, which the recommendation of the tribunal was that I go on medical disability which obviously means I'll remain on the payroll of the company and they'll pay for my medical insurance and everything, which is not the case at the moment, as they dodged the recommendation and came up with something else, uh, replaced the recommendation with me leaving the company on medical separation, which means medical separation is basically me and the company agreeing to part ways on the three months basic salary and then from there on I go my way, company goes its ways, I go suffer, I go die, I go look for another employment. But now in my current situation with my, with my illness, I'm not employable. No company can take me in as I feel good this moment. After 10 minutes I'm feeling ill or my circulation is not good, I have to stand up, I can't sit for, uh, for long. I, um, my mobility is actually also not well. So... Were the union officials involved in this, what happened to you? The union officials were involved, but I think they were corrupt. I think they were... I think this is actually a fraud case, because I think they've been paid out, because they were not on my side during the tribunal or during the whole process because they were forcing me to sign for the medical separation instead of the medical disability which was the recommendation of the, the outcome of the tribunal. And we had this tribunal today of workers from all over Namibia yeah. and many of them have become injured um, and the conditions uh, in the mines and other places seem to be uh, extremely dangerous and deadly. Silicosis, you worked in a uranium mine, uh, 
Was there a problem with other workers? The problem is a lot. Even if you look back at the Rossing's history, they have fight back and forth with uh, uh, former employees regarding health-related issues. It's now to do with workers who had, uh, say, contact with acid, who had acid injuries, people with lung uh, diseases and all that. But then Rossing as a company is always trying to defend itself that they are not the source of people's illnesses. Imagine a person going from a rossing, having have to do uh, um, uh, exit medicals, and then you are cleared that you are free of any illnesses. And then you get an, an opportunity to work for the same company under subcontractor, and then with a pre-medical uh, checkup before you join the company again, then they pick up that you have an illness. But then Rossing doesn't want to take responsibility of that illness. And the takeover of the uh, Chinese Chinese National Nuclear Corporation um, led to an attack on the union leadership, uh, the new union leadership that was elected after you left. Mm -hmm. um, and w what is the situation now with contract laborers at Rossing? Um, to my understanding, they are now so much under pressure. The workforce is under pressure because they don't have sufficient, let me say, put it like, they don't have sufficient standby or, or represent, uh, representatives of the union. Because the union guys or the guys who are supposed to defend the workforce are afraid to be victimized by the companies and then have to be, to, 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 to to be dismissed like the former Rossing BEC members. So for now, workers only work under the rules of the Chinese. They can't oppose the rules. If you oppose the rules, then you are the bad person, and then you need to give way for the Chinese to do their thing. Yeah. And so you're, you're saying that they're basically breaking the union and telling the workers that you're not going to have any protection if you object to some conditions there. Exactly. That's, they want it to be done their way, only their way. You do it my way or you leave. Yeah, that's how they want it to be done. And what was your thoughts about the testimony of workers around Namibia? I mean, Namibia is a rich country, mm -hmm. tremendous wealth, you know, marble, uranium, lithium, yet the kind of deprivation, the kind of attacks that workers face in housing, it seems like uh, the conditions are deteriorating for workers so they can't survive. Um, I mean, if the average Namibian has to go on the street to beg for, 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 for donations, if the average Namibian has to go on the street just to find employment, which is also not accessible, and then you find uh, that the um, most companies or most shareholders in the big companies are from the, uh, are from the politicians. And they don't, need, they don't want to share their wealth with anyone. So the politicians are the rich people in Namibia. And the, and the masses are the poor people. But we vote for them in their positions. But then they just give us the little bit. And your survival is at stake. Uh, you need to get, you've got a case, you filed cases, you spent a lot of money on lawyers to, to defend yourself and to try to get uh, justice. What, what's happened with that? I've tried to get justice. I've, like for my case, I've taken it to three different lawyers. When I present my case, the lawyer tells me I have a good case, my case is straightforward and it's not gonna take long. But then I start putting in the little bit money I have. And when the lawyer sees that I can't afford any more, then I'm told my case will take long or I don't have a case or all that. And then I move to the next lawyer who says, oh no, the previous lawyer was just trying to do some what what, so I'll help you better. You have a good case. Then I start off paying, paying, paying. Later on, I can't afford, told the same, same story again. And now, I don't know with my case, because I've been fighting it just 
with the company straight and the insurance. I didn't present my case to the Labor Commissioner, which I'm now told is uh, uh, my case does, does not uh, qualify for Labor Commissioner's office anymore because I was supposed to report it within a six month period of my dismissal. So for now, I can't present the case in front of the Labor Commissioner's office. And what do you think about the Namibian Labor Commission? Namibian Labor Commissioner, to my understanding, they are corrupt or they are biased because most of the cases, like the ones that we, we heard today, most of the people who had cases in front of the Labor Commissioner, you can see it's a straightforward case, but they are dodging, 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 and they never get to give, to give the rewards of the, the awards of the, of the employees. Yeah. So it's controlled by the corporations? It's controlled. I think, it, it, I think the, I think the, the labor committee, the arbitrators may be, are being paid by the corporations because there's no way a straightforward case which you know that ABC would have won his case, but then they're holding, withholding his case and later being told that he does not have a case against the company. Yeah. So that must be frustrating, right? And, Very you know. much frustrating. Very much frustrating. As I'm sitting here today, I don't know what's next for tomorrow. For me, I, I must live on a special diet. I must have clean water in my house just to, to keep my health. I must attend dialysis every second day for, for my blood to be flushed. But then the income, Rossing shut off my income totally. I was supposed to be not even being paid by them because I've been paying for my insurance. My insurance have been deducting from my salary. So I would have been living from my insurer up to now, up to my retirement age. But now they ruined everything. They blocked my ways. I have no way of income. I have no way of getting employed by any other company. All I need to do is beg, get family donations. If this person helped me the, other, the previous month and can't help me this month, I need to understand. My kids, I can't, I can't even spoil my kids anymore, that, which used to be the case. Like now, I traveled uh, plus minus 500 in case. 500 kilometers from Sokop to, to join this, uh, for this uh, meeting. And then I had to borrow money from neighbors just to, uh, for fuel, because I can't use public transportation as I cannot sit for long. You know, if you use public transportation, you have to adhere by the rules. So I need to use private uh, vehicle to come here. As to when I need to stand, I must go stand still and then I get out of a car just to move a bit, yeah. So now it's a problem, a really big problem to me now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. My name is Geraldine Goeyeman. I'm from the homeless group in Ochumise. This group was founded in 1999 by Mr. Yebat Bekas and his wife. They got together, they, they spoke to the community, they uh, got a piece of land whereby they built houses for the poor, for the homeless. I don't know actually what happened there, but then there was an interference in the building process whereby our city of Ventuk took over the process. Okay, so um, as I was saying that um, the city of Ventuk took over and uh, uh, the structuring of the building, it just collapsed. The way the houses were supposed to be built, it didn't turn out that way. It was built with second-hand materials, poor fabric. It was the house was bu is built, the houses are built out of foam out of white foam and whenever it rains the house is damaged water goes into the houses but the main issue that we are sitting with is those are supposed to be homeless houses for the lower income but as we are as the city of winter takes us today is that we are middle class and they can cut water they can cut electricity anytime the rates 
and taxes are very high. We are people which is unemployed. There's people, they are pensioners. And if you need a pensioner in Namibia, it gets paid $1,300. Uh, $1, so if you need to pay your, your, your monthly rate in taxes, 900 and something, it, 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 if you need to pay it 900 and something, what will they eat? What will they drink at the end of the day? As I said, they are unemployed people as well. We have been to certain offices. We wrote letters to CEOs. We wrote letters to the council and nobody gets back to us. Whenever we reach the offices, the only thing we hear is that there's million dollars outstanding. And thereby they cut. For example, I represent my mom. It's our third year without water, without electricity. Whenever you go there, you get a red letter written in big. This is what you have to pay first. You have to pay 50000 first before it can be reconnected. You have to pay what first before we... There's no way out. So we heard about this um, conference which will be held here. So I thought, let's give it a go. Maybe we can get better assistance over here. Uh, my name is Tuafini Pietras. And you, you've come to this labor conference, national labor conference, in uh, Woodhook, capital of Namibia, to, to talk about the conditions of workers where you are and your struggle to defend workers. Why don't you talk about why you came here, what your issues are, and what needs to be done about the conditions, attacks on Namibian workers? No, I actually came here in solidarity with the other um, exploited employees across the country. I also come uh, here to state our case because um, we were all unfairly dismissed by Best Share Investment in 2001 on 14 August. And uh, as we stand until today, we had a, a labor case going on for years now. Um, it's almost, yeah, it's been going on for two years and three months. Um, we got a default award uh, on June, yeah, somewhere in June this year, 2023. But up to now, we haven't received our award yet. So we came here in solidarity with uh, the other employees also being victimized from various companies, and namely in the mining sector, in, in the marble and the granite uh, that is uh, situated at Karibep and, <coughs> and Yusakos, uh, that is run by the Chinese, uh, which uh, our head of state uh, so-called to say that Chinese are good investors, while in the meantime they're actually exploiting employees, uh, low wages, zero benefit, and also very serious safety concern. And what happened? You, you took up a struggle at that company. Uh, what was the response of the company uh, to your demands? Um, I was actually a, a supervisor myself, but uh, having a background of a, of the trade union, because I was the chairperson of the region, I, I saw it fit to stand up for these workers. There were times that uh, management called me in and to uh, asking me to reframe or to stay away. And then I said, I mean, an injury to one is an injury to, or to all, and um, I cannot back down to watch my brothers, uh, my fellow brothers, African brothers, being victimized by these Chinese. So we're going to stand together, and whatever comes must come. And there's labor laws in Namibia, uh, which are supposed to protect the rights of Namibian workers and unions. What's happening, and how are those laws uh, respected? Are they respected by these Chinese companies? Or? I mean, uh, just starting briefly on the, on the union, we, we were members of the Mine Workers Union, uh, it's the Mine Workers Union in Namibia, yes, which mine. is a national union representing yes. mine workers. This is the Mine Workers Union of Namibia, and this uh, Mine Workers Union have actually sold us out because uh, the management, uh, the MD of that, uh, the company of Beshche, went to Windhoek to see the president, Alan Kalumbu, at that time, and they had a meeting um, with some of our shop stewards, and after that meeting, I think it was just a week or a few days, retrenchment letters were sent out. I mean, uh, there's no justice in Namibia when we actually want to, to speak the truth. I think, in actual fact, labor offices should be closed because they are not helping the employees uh, across all 14 regions in, in the country. You will see employees going to labor, labor, registering labor cases. They've been tracking on for many years, as we say it now. We had our case going on for two years. So there's actually not justice. I mean, in most of the labor officials citing with employers, I mean, actually selling the employees out, I mean, instead of doing their job, that they're actually getting paid for. I mean, it's just a heck up. I mean, it's, it's, it's like in, 
I don't even know if people today will always talk about the contract labor system that they fought back in in the 80s when this country was 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 not free. Do you you understand? So the same system, the same people that claim that they freed this country through the contract labor system or wanted the contract labor system to come to an end are actually the ones who are spearheading the contract labor system at current we speak. If people are telling you that Chinese that came far from Asia to come and mine here, irrespective of, 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 of what mining or whatever they are mining, like the uranium at Sokop Uranium, uh, to have, they have taken over Rosing, and now they are busy in the marble and granite. I mean, the, the, the government is mute on how Chinese are actually treating fellow Namibians. We had many labor cases as numerous uh, labor offices, but the government is mute on this. And there's a mound, a mountain of lithium at the port of Walrus. What, what is that all about? Why is there a mound of lithium at the port of Walrus? What's been happening there? Uh, my friend, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Uh, let, let us just be honest. Uh, we had engagement with the lithium thing. Um, we actually, um, I myself was there. Uh, we were there, I think, last year, where we were called on by the employees because they were being exploited by those Chinese. The Chinese actually took out a firearm. Uh, they also locked us inside that mine. They block our vehicle with their tipper trucks or dump trucks so we couldn't move. Actually, we were rescued by the police who came from Omaruru, a neighboring town, a near, nearby town, I think it's about 40 k's from Omaruru. And, but when the police came, we told the police that uh, these Chinese were having a firearm and police also knows the Chinese name. It's like these guys are friends. I mean, there's literally nothing we can do about it. I mean, we, we, we want to call on the international community really to, to come up with something that they can really help us here in Namibia because it's like we are we are pushed in a corner whereby this I mean there's nothing we can do even the laws are clear but the laws are not being implemented neither are they being enforced so are the Chinese investors here above the law yes they actually uh, one should actually say the Chinese are actually allowed to come with their communist, communist law from China and implement it here because they are not following the democratic laws that are within our Labor Act of 2011 or 2007, neither are they com uh, compiling with our constitution. It's just a lot of violation, but neither is our head of state or so-called those in, in parliament really doing anything about it. Well, this. well, this lithium mountain at the port, they say that it's been illegally, they were trying to illegally export it, uh, but they've been exporting lithium for a long time here. Uh, they haven't been following the rules. Do you think there's corruption and takeovers? I mean, th th all of a sudden there's going to be an election next year, and now they're saying they want processing plants for jobs for uh, you know, Namibians. Do uh, you think that this is a real uh, issue for them, or they're, they're just using it politically? You see, when something is prohibited to be exported, there are laws and regulations that need to be enforced. If there's lithium at the port, what is the Ministry of Mines and Energy doing? Why can you not make use of the laws to discipline or call the Chinese to order? Secondly, this... Do you, do you think they should be criminally prosecuted? Yes. Because it's, it's against our laws. If you are doing something which is against the law, you are, you are violating the law, and that's in a criminal act. You understand? And, uh, you know, now maybe I have been in independence for how many years now? 33 years, eh? 33 years. And today... I think last week, eh, was it yesterday, the head of state is talking of that no raw materials should be exported out of the country because they want everything to be f finalized here in order to create j jobs. You understand? We are heading for election next year, 20, 2024. And that is the system or the campaign tool that they are using in order to make people, the community think or the nation at large to think that, yes, our country or our country leaders are really here for us. They have stopped everything. Why didn't they stop it five years back? Why do they want to stop it today? You understand? And, and of how much damage have been done for all those years, many Namibians been unemployed. Had these products been already told that, yes, we want everything to be processed here and no raw materials should be going out, we would not have people suffering. 60% of the Namibian population are unemployed, namely the youth. And the wealth, not just of Namibia, South Africa, all Africa is a very rich rich continent, yet the poverty, the deprivation here. Um, now, the Chinese say that they're using the uh, Belt and Road to do development projects, to help, the co help countries to develop that. 
Uh, you don't see that at all in, in Namibia. I want the Chinese to show us what did they bring, what did they do for the community, uh, whether uh, their social responsibility. We spoke of Rossing have built many years back during, in the 80s, they have built Arandes, the built Tramareski allocations in Swakop Moon, TCL or CDM have built Orange Moon, and uh, TCL have built Chumep. What did these Chinese do when they came in? They've come in and lowered the salaries of the employees. As we speak now today, there's about 400 employees that are going to be retrenched, permanent employees at Rossing. They are going to bring a subcontractor company, which is Bai Feng. This is a, a company from China. You understand? Meaning that we are going to have more Chinese here. And in actual fact, what is going to happen, uh, workers are going to have low wages. They are going to have zero benefit. You understand? So in actual fact, the government have allowed the contract labor system to be brought back by the Chinese in a system because the majority, those that are sitting in parliament, they are shareholders of these companies. And this privatization contract labor, I mean, the resources uh, in South Africa, they said that they wanted to nationalize them. They should be for the working class. The people of South Africa, they privatized it. The, gov the president of Ramaphosa is a stockholder in Long Row Mining Company. We had a report that the miners there went underground uh, at a mine to protest the fact they couldn't change their union. The Chinese company would not allow them to change their union. It seems that this contract labor is bringing back apartheid conditions. Do you believe that that's the case? Yes, that's exactly what's, what's happening. Slavery, slavery, more suffering. I mean, in Africa in general, from all corners of Africa, we're not supposed to suffer because we have all the natural resources. And you, the list goes on. And most of these resources are actually more wanted in Europe and, and wherever. You understand? But we have our people living in abject poverty. People are living in shacks, in temporary shelters for years, which are called ghettos. You understand? While our elite are living in luxury houses. So what the Chinese actually come here is just make sure that they are friends with those on top. And then they are given the authority to, uh, what, to do whatever with us, to exploit us, and nothing is going to happen because they are protected by those on top. And there is no working class party in Namibia, mass working class party no. in South Africa. Even in the United States, there's no working class party. Do you think the working class in Namibia and around the world needs to organize politically so that they have a party that represents them? Yes. We, we, we really need to do that because uh, I think that is going to help the, the, the workers in general, irrespective of what uh, sectors they are into. It's going to do more changes because, as we speak now, we have trade unions in, in this country, as you said, Mine Workers Union, neither the Federation, NUW. They are all, I mean, they are all useless. These are captured unions. These, these unions are affiliated to the ruling party. So their masters are in parliament and there's nothing they can do. You understand? These guys are so aware that they can go to certain companies and some companies they can't go because their masters are involved. They are shareholders of these companies. And there's literally nothing they can do. So how do you belong to such a union that can actually not stand up for you 100%, which is actually muscled and controlled by government? And what do you think needs to be done to change this because uh, it's getting worse and, uh, and, and suffering is growing of, of the people of Namibia, the people of South Africa, the people of the world for that matter. I think point number one, what we actually need to do, the nation needs to wake up, to wake up and unite and to remove this political party which is called SWAPO because we have suffered many years now, 33 years we've been suffering under this SWAPO-led government. And uh, most probably if a new party comes up, can come up with new ideas, you understand? Because these guys have been sitting in there for long and they know all the loopholes and they know all the funny tricks when it comes to election. So I think Namibians is high time, come 2024, make sure that you don't vote for SWAPO. Let yeah. the Chinese vote SWAPO because they are here on the ticket of SWAPO. And there's also a struggle going on today, a war. There's a war in Ukraine and now the United States and Europe the United States is supporting Israel and the apartheid conditions of the Palestinians. What's your view about what's going on in Gaza and with the situation of the Palestinians? I actually condemn what actually is happening. Um, we should actually resolve things uh, on the table instead of using mass destructions or weapons. Or th there's a better way to, to, to resolve it. I haven't really paid mu much attention on it, um, and that's why I cannot really comment deep going in. But here and there I've seen, but I mean... 
Um, this, you see, at the end of the day, the country suffers, people suffers, people, kids. I've seen uh, women and children dying, injured, and so on, on some social media. It's just terrible, you understand? So there's a better way to resolve all these things. If what we are saying is we, want to put, we, we put up proper resolutions for our government to look into an audit on all the mining industries in terms of health and safety, uh, the basic wage, and the conditions well, that workers live in. And then again, we are asking or for, for the government to authorize another audit into the Ministry of Labor to see how many dismissals took place during the, 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 the current year and the years before, how many arbitration hearings or how many dismissal hearings did not, are not finalized. And then we also talk about forming a united front of, uh, of Namibian workers that are, that are united for the same cause. And then we are looking at uh, getting workers to be educated in terms of knowing how to represent workers, knowing about their rights and everything. And what do you think about this whole lithium mound, hill of lithium at the port of Wallace? For me, I think it's, uh, it's, it's high time that they were exposed because these people were looting these, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, raw materials for the past years. We've been hearing about trucks moving there, but nothing was been done. But I, I commend them, I commend the Namibian police and the people that got them to book that for a good job. And the, and the money that has been lost to the Namibian people yeah. as a result of the illegal support, uh, re export of the, should that be returned? Should China have to be, re re I mean, these companies return that to the people in Namibia, the workers in Namibia? Yeah, they should be held accountable for that because imagine, Comrade Steve, how many people are suffering? How many people are unemployed? And yet uh, resources are being looted, they are being stolen, and the profits are going to the Chinese or to the international world, while Namibians are suffering in the country. So we, we, I feel that it's, 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 pro, it's, it's very important that these people are held accountable and the money is returned to the workers, so that the workers can benefit from, the, from, from their fruits. And were you surprised by the testimony yesterday? I mean, the, the, all these workers and quarries and housing, the housing situation, I mean, it seems like there's a, a panoply of, of crises and conditions that workers face. Comrade Steve, oh, yesterday I was touched by the, te the wonderful testimony. I'll call it wonderful because it's something that, we, that, we, that, that, that you, you wouldn't imagine. Imagine being at work and a police officer is behind you uh, with, with, a, with a loaded weapon trying to, to force you to work in an unsafe condition. And then yet you hear stories of workers being injured, taken to hospital and left at the hospitals. Those are, those are huge and th those, are, those are serious, serious, serious uh, violations within your, your, your basic uh, human rights. And nothing is being done because the Chinese uh, employers are saying that uh, our, our Namibian officials or our Namibian leaders like money. It's high time that we start looking into, into the human aspect of this because at the end of the day, without the workers or the working class, nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. And now, with these testimonies, it is clear evidence that we are being exploited. The Chinese uh, employers are coming here with an agenda to destroy and to enslave us. It's, it's evident because look at how many Chinese-owned companies testified yesterday and gave testimony. It's more than 10. And we are sitting in the same, 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 same situation. And we can no more turn a blind eye to this. We need to be standing up and fighting for our rights. So this hearing, this tribunal, and you're going to be giving your presentation, your contribution today, can be a beginning for the people of Namibia to take control, take back control of the country for so the benefit of the Namibians. Certainly. This is the beginning, and it, it, we, are, we are planning to have it annually or even biannually so that we can create that awareness and create that environment for, for, for workers to have a safe haven. Viva! 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 Viva!
Down exploitation, down. Down, down exploitation, down. 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 down exploitation, down. Down. Forward the workers, forward. Forward. Forward the workers, forward. Forward. forward.